Hello again everyone, so you may have seen my video recently where I reviewed this uh, Imperial Lager Yeast Global L13. I'm basically going to have another go using this but I'm going to try something else um, out with it a little bit different which is uh, basically fermenting it at ale temperatures. Now it's not recommended by Global themselves but um, I have seen some experiments recently online where people have used this um, at warmer temperatures and I'm going to try it out and basically see if I can get a decent lager fermented using a normal kind of ale fermentation schedule. So uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Okay, so in the last video, um, as you saw, I basically just fermented this using a standard kind of uh, lager schedule. Um, and it worked well, made a nice beer. I did talk a lot in that video about the flocculation with this and how it's pretty poor. Um, the beer was very hazy, lots of uh, lots of yeast in suspension still even after a while. It has pretty much cleared up in the keg now, um, but it's almost all the way down to the bottom of the keg. So uh, yeah, as I said in that video, it needs finding. Now to be fair to Global, they do actually specifically say on their um, on their website in the description of this yeast that is very powdery and in order to get it to clear down you will either need to lager it for an extensive period or use some sort of filtration or finings on it. So I should have really kind of mentioned that a little bit more in the previous video that it's quite clearly stated that it's not a particularly good flocculator and um, you're going to need to do something if you want to get a clear lager. So this time I am also going to be fining it with gelatin um, in the keg or before it goes into the keg to try and sort out that issue and get the lager nice and clear. But the main thing that I want to do this time, as I've just said, is to actually try it out at a warmer temperature. Now, the recommendation on Global's instructions is to use it between 8 and 13 degrees. However, this is uh, supposed to be the Vihenstefan um, strain. I think I'm saying that right, and there's been various experiments specifically on the Brewlosophy website recently where they've used this strain in particular at warmer temperatures and had good success, but there's also been several other lager experiments um, where they've done the same sort of thing and got good results, and one of them was also with the dried version of the Vihenstefan yeast, which is, or Vihenstefan, I'm still thinking how to say that properly. Um, and that worked well at warm temperatures as well. And if you actually look at the fermentous instructions for that yeast, they do actually quote a temperature range between nine and 22 degrees. So 22 degrees is way outside of that um, normal kind of lager range. They do on the dry packet say, ideally you would have it between 12 and 15, but they are basically saying that you can um, successfully ferment it up to 22 degrees. So I'm gonna go for about 19, 20 degrees, go for a standard kind of ale fermentation schedule and basically uh, see how we get on. So why would I wanna do that? Well, basically, as you probably know, when you're fermenting with lager yeast, if you are having to keep the temperatures down, it can, um, if you're doing a traditional lager fermentation, it means a prolonged fermentation period, it's gonna tie up your brew fridge uh, or temperature control, however you're doing that. and Basically, it can be just a little bit inconvenient if you've got other stuff going on where you're wanting to keep stuff at normal ale temperatures. So I've got a couple of beers in there already. I don't want to have to stop making other things because I'm doing a lager. Even when you're using the quick lager method, the amount of temperature changes that you're going through there, you don't really want to have other uh, fermentations going on at the same time. Um, ale fermentation particularly, because those changes in temperature can muck up the yeast in, in those other brews. So if I can make decent lager, basically, using a standard ale fermentation schedule and keep um, everything in there at the same temperature, it means that I can have loads of different beers going at the same time, including lagers, which is great. Now, there are obviously kind of hybrid or um, sort of lager style yeast like California Common and uh, Kolsch yeast, which you can use at ale temperatures anyway. Um, and I've used a couple of those in the past before and they've been good, but if I can get a, a really clean kind of lager from this, which I don't necessarily think you uh, will find with those other yeasts all the time, um, and get a proper kind of like Pilsner type um, 
get a proper kind of pilsner type taste uh, that would be ideal so that's what I'm looking for basically a proper nice clean um, lager but fermented at warmer temperatures so let's see how the uh, global gets on let's see if um, the information off of the brewlosophy experiments uh, has anything to it and um, fingers crossed so I've actually got the beer mashing away over there it's um, another glorious day so starting to heat up a bit in the shed already um, it's a lager with a slight twist to it so it's pretty straightforward lager recipe but with a slight twist let's have a look at what we're doing so we've basically got uh, lager malt wheat malt a little bit of caramunic just for color and a touch of sweetness and then we've got magnum for bittering and the slight difference with this one is the use of challenger late in the boil so i've kind of based this on a clone recipe for a beer called Herleman's Lager, which I've never actually drank myself, but I've seen on um, the Home Brewing UK forum, a few people have brewed that and said that it's really good, and apparently Challenger, uh, the English Hop Challenger works really well in lagers, so I'm, I was kind of interested in that and thought I'd give that a go. So it's kind of an English um, hops lager, basically, but fairly moderate level of hopping. I slightly bumped up the amount of Challenger at the end, so um, we've got 12 grams, 12 grams, and then 24 grams at 15, 10, and 5 minutes. No flame out hops, no dry hops, so it should be um, a fairly restrained sort of lager in terms of the hopping, but hopefully quite tasty as well. And obviously, there's your global yeast that we're using. So, yeah, I'm not going to film all the brewing and stuff, I'm just going to concentrate on the fermentation, but uh, let's get on with brewing this beer, and then I'll come back to you with some more footage. Right, so here's the lager that we're going to be pitching it into. Um, we are down to 20 degrees, so I'm going to ferment it at 19. But 20 degrees is close enough for pitching temperature. So the uh, one of the other reasons that I want to use this yeast at the higher temperature is uh, at the moment with the hot weather that we're having, tap water is about 24 degrees. There's no chance of getting down to lager pitching temp with my immersion chiller or any other type of chiller to be honest unless you've got a sort of refrigerated glycol system and uh, then getting it down from that temperature to sort of say 12 10 or 12 degrees in a brew fridge is going to take absolutely hours so I'd rather pitch the yeast in there um, a bit earlier and not give it too long without any yeast in there for uh, bacterial infections or anything else to develop so let's get that out there and we'll pitch some yeast in Okay, so here's our yeast packet. That's been star sand on the outside before I opened it. Um, it's quite a fresh one, so just over a month old, about six weeks, I think. And uh, I'm not making a starter this time because if I'm fermenting at the warmer temperature, it should be okay with just a single packet. And uh, I didn't get around to doing that in time anyway, so let's get it in there. And I'll update once this is off and fermenting.
So you've just seen it being poured out the keg. Here it is. Now that is looking very nice, if I do say so myself. Um, as I just said, it's only been, well, it's not actually even been two weeks in the keg. So I'm an impatient bastard, basically, when it comes to waiting for these lagers. But it went into the keg on the 12th. And it's the uh, 24th. So it's been 12 days in. Uh, it's nicely carved up. The gelatin's definitely done its work. Uh, it's maybe not completely crystal clear, but it's near as damn it. So without that carbonation streaming up there, it is an etched glass, by the way, so it looks pretty crazy fizzy, but it's, um, it's actually just about where I want it for a lager. Uh, yeah, so gelatin's work really well. That would probably drop even clearer, given a little bit longer to lager, but um, appearance-wise, looking great. And the gelatin's work, so when I was talking about the global yeast needing L13, needing some fining to bring it clear, gelatin certainly seems to provide an adequate solution for that. Now, more importantly, um, we need to see what it actually tastes like because obviously being brewed at um, the warmer temperature, traditional theory for lager making might um, say that it could come out tasting a little bit too estery or have other off flavours in there. So um, all the things associated with a you know hot fermentation basically. But uh, I've had a few samples already of this and I'm not a trained, you know, beer judge or um, taste or anything but I've made enough homebrew myself and taste enough beer to know when stuff isn't right and aroma wise it just smells like a nice malty clean lager no issues there whatsoever um, has that kind of classic I don't know crackery kind of malt um, aroma to it not much going on in terms of the hops coming through but challenges are fairly you know, mild um, sort of English hop aroma wise, so I'm not too surprised about that. Uh, but I'm certainly not getting any um, of the kind of classic off flavours that you might associate with with lagers. So there's no, um, you know, obvious signs of uh, DMS or um, sulphurous smells or what else could there be in there um, or diacetyl or anything like that. So. Um, yeah, smells good, looks good. And flavour wise, to me, that is absolutely clean as a whistle. So, considering it hasn't really, you know, like I said, I am impatient. I haven't let it have what would be considered um, anywhere near a full lagering period in the fridge. Um, fermentation basically went along pretty much exactly the same as when I used it previously, except a lot quicker. Um, hit about the same level of attenuation, which was very high, um, 84%, as I mentioned previously, um, and dropped out pretty much after about seven days. Um, yeah, it just tastes like a clean lager. Pretty crisp. Maybe it will crisp up a little bit with a little bit more lagering time. Nice, dry. Um, clean finish but it's also got a good body to it so I think definitely with home brewed lagers when you're making them with an all malt um, base and not using any additional kind of sugars or adjuncts like um, you know corn um, sh corn sugar um, or syrup or um, the flaked maize or anything like that you do get a much better body to them although it you know this does kind of taste like um, a lot of kind of commercial sort of craft lagers yeah so as far as the yeast goes I can't really see any difference between using that um, L13 or Vihen Stefan strain at the warm temperature or the cold temperature it's um, you know to my palate there's virtually no difference whatsoever uh, which is great because if I can ferment a lager out at 20, 19, 20 degrees um, and get it done a lot quicker and not have to bother with the um, 
you know, tying up the fermentation fridge for a longer ferment at a cooler temperature, that makes my life a lot easier and means that I can brew um, lots of different styles at the same time. So that's really good news. As far as this beer goes, um, just generally, like overall, what my impressions of it, um, Challenger hops, interestingly, I don't think many people would be able to tell that this um, was made with, you know, something other than your typical kind of German lager hop. So a lot of people say that English hops are pretty close to, to noble hops and obviously that would make sense as geographically they're not that far apart and um, probably have, uh, you know, been bred from similar stock uh, over the years. And uh, yeah, it's got that kind of sort of very subtle fruitiness to it, um, but mainly a kind of floral um, thing with kind of nice, uh, nice soft bittering. Um, could easily pass for a for a noble hop in there. I think the Challenger does seem to work well as a, as a lager hop. Um, I would maybe, if I did it again, want to just push the bitterness up a bit to make it give it a little bit more bite, um, and maybe up the. Uh, last edition, I know I said from the recipe I did double the flame out edition, but it was only about um, I think 50 ish grams in total um, of Challenger went into this, so it's still fairly lightly hopped in terms of you know modern kind of craft lagers or um, hoppy lagers. But it's very nice, that is massively drinkable. Um, it's a shame the heat wave seems to have died a death this weekend for the bank holiday because otherwise that would be very tempting to to crack into this and smash a few but um, it's a really nice drinkable summer lager that and uh, yeah if you are interested in trying out some uh, English hops like Challenger or I guess EKG or something like that might work as well um, give it a go because it's done a good job there so uh, I'll stop waffling on there I think but um, yeah good success with that um, yeast wise and using the UK hops in, in a lager so happy brewer cheers everyone I'm the dude so that's what you call me you know uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or uh, you know El Duderino